Welcome to Ridiculous. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. I hope you're living your best life. I confronted her two days ago, and yesterday I told her that I wanted a divorce. I was too devastated from the things I read. I felt that I did not want to be a choice made out of mediocre options. I should be the only option. I felt that I would never fully recover and that I felt I deserved a higher level of happiness than the one I would have if we tried to reconcile. She understood and accepted my decision, but was devastated. We ended up having a five hour, highly emotional discussion with a lot of crying. The divorce was pretty much a done deal. She was going to move out as soon as possible and had started emailing brokers through Craigslist. In the end, I waffled, changed my mind, and decided I wanted more time to think about my decision. During our discussion, a lot of good memories and good things about our relationship were brought up when we spoke about our futures apart. We both could not contain our tears when we spoke about the dream and plans to have a family, dying and how we would not feel 100% right being apart from each other. It was the first time I felt remorse from her because of what she's done. And this is the most difficult part for me to reconcile. The things she said in the email versus how great she is as a person and how good she has been to me and my family over the years before the affair. I also find it difficult to reconcile the idea of having to put forth an insane amount of effort to change myself, my introversion, and to improve our relationship after what she did to me. Having unprotected sex with a man and getting pregnant with his baby, at this juncture, I still do not know what to do. She has cut off all contact with the other man. It's weird, but a part of me believes that I will never find someone as good as her ever again. And a part of her believes that she will never find someone who is good to her as I've ever been again. But there needs to be wholesale changes, definitely many on my end, to have ourselves fit together better. My wife has tried her best to be extremely good to me during the time after I found out. Being there to talk things out in a calm manner, expressing to me how she cares for me and still has wishes for a family with me. Understanding the times in which I cry profusely and hurt for hours on end and taking me to the hospital and taking care of me in my time of pain. I do have some concerns. While she has answered questions, she refuses to say the other man's name. I already know who it is and she knows I know and won't even acknowledge openly that it's him. She feels extremely uncomfortable speaking about specific details of her relationship with the other man. This is a huge personal component in their relationship. The other man went through a traumatic breakup where he had suicidal thoughts and my wife saved him from it. He is an eternal pessimist that doesn't believe in true love, marriage, having children, and is a bit of a depressive alcoholic. The other man initiated the affair and my wife, as demonstrated in the emails, is proud of it because the other man apparently has changed his outlook on life and is now wanting to love, marry, and have children now. Just not with her. Ridiculous, isn't it? Her only answer for me was tears and a statement that she feels that God put her on earth to help people with their problems and to solve their issues and that her purpose isn't for her to be happy. And she has always been that way. She has been extremely thoughtful, understanding, patient, reliable, and generous to all of her friends, family, myself, over her entire lifetime. Which is why I still believe that despite her indiscretions, that she's still a good person. Hey guys, here's some new information. Her thing with guy number one was not a crush. It was an emotional affair. Four years ago, we had a long distance relationship where we grew apart. A lot of it was my fault because I didn't like to talk on the phone. I'm a big introvert. And I was also so focused on doing well in school while she worked 80 to 100 hours. Although I would expend a lot of effort to travel to her city every weekend, I did not communicate enough with her. And during our time apart, which was two years, she would have dinner slash plans with guy number one twice a month. They became very good friends, but nothing physical happened or would have happened. As guy number one already had a serious girlfriend and he is a devout Catholic. In the two years since she traveled back to live with me and guy number one moved to another country, they still maintained close contact with each other through email and text. 
She considered him her best friend. When he got married, her feelings intensified and she could not stop thinking about him. Eventually things died down and she started her affair with guy number two. Her only answer for me was tears and a statement that she feels that God put her on earth to help people with their problems and to solve their issues and that her purpose isn't for her to be happy. And she has always been that way. I told you guys this before. Here's the update. I made the decision to divorce my wife and told her over a week ago. She's still currently living with me, but she's found a new apartment to move into at the start of September. We are still on good terms. However, we have not ironed out all of the details of our divorce agreement yet, which is uncontested, no fault divorce. In the end, both affairs were too much for me to overcome. I couldn't take the risk of still feeling this way after a lengthy reconciliation and of cheating in the future after we've had children. I still feel a high level of stress and anxiety. My chest still hurts. I also have periods of numbness, but I also see the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you guys so much for all of your advice. Gonna go Claire, what? I can't just kick you out. No, I, uh, I, I. I don't care if you cheated on him. He can't just kick you out. That's yeah, your house too. Cute. He's gonna go and say he's gonna. He, he can't just kick you out. I, I, I don't care if you cheated on him. He can't just kick no, you out. That's I, your house I, too. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, he can't just kick you really out. Like, no, he's kicking me out. He told me if I come there, he's gonna fuck. If you'd like to make a call, Claire, please hang what up and try happened? again. If you need help, Claire, hang up and then dial your operator. Claire. Our call has been forwarded.